Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. I've called my good pal back. Uh, somehow my uh, toilet got full of toilet paper because I stuck the whole roll down there a little bit. Just because I needed to get this guy back because I think there's more uh, that we need from him. Hi! Oh, hi. Thanks for fixing my toilet. Are you the one who did this? Um, um, yeah. um, why, uh, well, um, uh, no, I didn't do that. I bet. Why, um, no, it, uh, it, it was my wife, Morgan Fairchild, whom I've seen naked. Hey, don't let the door hit you in the ass on your way out, okay? Uh, yeah, I was just leaving. Well, when I say I'm just leaving, um, after I steal more tools from you, then I'm leaving. Say, I bet he'd never miss a simple file. There we go, that's what we need. Is there anything else we can get from him? Mark has nothing more for you to steal. Uh, to borrow. Ah, okay, they're on to me. Alright, so he's gone, so now that I have a file, I... Ugh, I forgot what even I was doing with it. I was gonna do something about this and the Wait, no, I remember. I was going to turn this spare key into the, uh, what was it, the, the high dive key, the bungee key for Merrily. So let's first... Comparing the impression in the bar of soap to that key you filched from the lobby, you notice they are exactly the same size and type. The key has only a few bumps of metal here and there. Remove them and they'd be a perfect match. All right, there we go. So there's the hint we were looking for. So let's combine the key with the file and we should be able to do a little matchy moo. Yes, you carefully file this key with your bastard file using the impressed soap for a pattern. Bastard? Now you have your very own tower key. Bastard file? Does that mean I hold it with two hands or one and a, I, I don't know. I think I can remember what a bastard sword is. I probably don't. So before we go to the pool, uh, serious time, I I do want to apologize for last part uh, during the whole Chablis sequence. Even though it was kind of that point where Larry was getting what was coming to him, it was still technically kind of... Uh, hey Al, uh, not right now, buddy. Uh, it was still technically kind of a rape scene. It was a little bit rapey. And even though Larry was sort of on the receiving end of it, it and I made jokes about it, and I'm sorry. I, I, I got kind of carried away in the moment. It, even Larry feels kind of sheepish about it. Look at him. So my apologies. I didn't mean to offend anybody. It, I got carried away. That being said, let's continue on with 100% fewer uncomfortable moments. That's a lie. And that means I gotta get changed into my swimsuit all over again and go through the whole... Uh, I'll see you in a second. All right, I think this is the one. Because of your cleverness, this once humble unknown room key is now an exact copy of the key to the bungee jumping tower. Bingo. All right, there you go. She's gotta feed the monkey. And here's your monkey key. Look what I have for you, Mayor your own personal copy of the key to the bungee jumping tower. Ah! Oh, Larry! My hero! You're just wonderful! Okay, meet me tonight, late, after everyone else is asleep, and we'll go down together! Gee, I wonder if we could just cut to later tonight. Through the magic of gaming, yes, we can. Later that night. Thanks, Neil. Oh my god, this night palette swap is awful. I hope your key works as well as that transition. I thought we were going to have to wait around here until nightfall or something. Oh, the fourth wall. I could see the cracks The coast in is it. clear, Mare. Open the gate. Ladies first. <laughs> Larry, shouldn't you... You're going to be bungee jumping over top of a pool. You should probably be wearing your swimsuit for this just in case the inevitable happens and the rope snaps and you fall into the pool and... Oh, dear. Come on, Larry! Only a few hundred feet to go! <sighs> How about we take a little break? Larry, you've done this before. Get no up there. No way, Larry! Come on! A little exercise will do you a world of good. Besides, wait till you see the view from the top of the bungee tower at night. Don't say it, Larry. Perhaps a closer look would inspire me to climb faster. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, 
How high are we? Oh, so that ladder keeps going up and up and up past the uh, diving platform? Oh my lord. What is that down there? Is that a frigate? Isn't that the Exxon Valdez? Um, topical humor for the 90s. Mare's beautiful hair is sparkling in the moonlight. And at this height, there's very little air to cloud your view. Yeah, I'm probably gonna pass out. Oh, you can see La Casalada down there. From this height, you swear you can see the curvature of the Earth. Mm, nope, flat earth always has, always will be. I'm kidding. Why have a warning light on this tower? No airplane can fly this high. Mayor, are you sure it's safe up here? My, there's not even a railing around this thing. <laughs> of course, silly. Now come over here by me. All right, I, I'm curious. I just want to see what happens if I just jump off. What? I can't? In a Sierra game, I'm not allowed to fall off a precarious height with no railing? Are you joking? That this is unforgivable. This is unexpected. I figured that'd be the first thing that they would program in as you walking directly off the edge. Oh, yes, Larry. That feels wonderful. What? Is you, that belly button massage feels great? I'm glad you enjoyed it. How do we how do we move forward? Aren't you ever afraid of falling? I mean, I'm no acrophobe, but this is the highest I've ever been. Except for one time during spring break in Fort Lauderdale when I hung out with young Billy Clinton. Oh, Bill Clinton pot <laughs> references. Afraid of falling? Silly Larry, falling's the best part. I guess I just keep touching her. Mmm, Larry, I'm beginning to feel that old feeling again. Oh, okay, all right, so this is how we move things along. I just give her little belly button massages and then she's good to go. Oh, yes. Larry, hurry, get undressed, now. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, oh please, protect your modesty, Larry. Like we haven't seen all of you this entire game. Merrily's bungee cords lie coiled like vipers, ready to strike the first unwary male who climbs into her lair. All right, that sounded really sinister. Come and get me, Larry. I'm bound up and bound for love. Oh, look at this. Okay, Mayor. I'm coming. This is cute. Don't make a joke. <laughs> Not without me, I hope. Mayor? I hope you're not gonna jump tonight and leave me alone up here. Nope, you're coming with me. Oh no, silly. There's only one thing I enjoy more than bungee jumping. You may think I'm an airhead who's never had an original thought. What? Why would I think that? Especially now. But I do know something about life and love and happiness. Well, Really, Mayor, that's not important right now. Yes, it is. Oh, but it's something I simply must say. In fact, I'll whisper it in your ear right now. What? My God, Marilee, I'm dumbfounded. That's amazing. You are so wise. I'm ultimate truth. I'm, I'm... Going to fall, yes, we know. Oh, that's why it wouldn't let me fall by myself. How did that get around my leg? <laughs> Isn't that just like a man? Always has to get off first. Yo! Quiet, Larry, you'll wake the entire resort. Now you've done it. You've awakened the entire resort. Everybody is staring out their windows at you, foolishly bungee jumping in the middle of the night wearing nothing but embarrassment. You are exhausted after your all-night naked bungee jumping session with Merrily. You could say you're at the end of your rope. I know I'm at the end of mine. I mean, I do have a love of this game in some bizarre, perverse, retro way, but I'm just praying for its end at this point. I think I've said that at every single game I've played so far in the Leisure Suit Larry series. It's like, yeah, I love it and everything, but man, I'm ready for this to be over. Oh, so here's the words of wisdom I learned from Merrily. These are the words of wisdom I learned from Merrily. Uh, <laughs> They're very special, <laughs> and I'm not about to say them out loud. And I don't think you ever do. 
We have a lot of what we need already. Um, you know what? Before we go too much further, let's go ahead and take the dumbwaiter up in the kitchen that we saw before, and we'll get a better idea of what we're doing and why. I think it's about time we learned the purpose of this game. Now, as with every other Legion Suit Larry game, or at least, at least the first one, um, there was always like this sort of ultimate goal you're working towards, but you don't know what that ultimate goal is until you get there. But in Leech Suit Larry 6, you kind of, uh, you get a hint about what you need to be doing, but it doesn't really have any effect on what you do. It's like, everything you need is going to fall in your lap you anyway. So it doesn't matter if you go down up here or now or not or later. It doesn't matter. Whatever. I'm being very eloquent. Up we go. It doesn't do anything now, of course. The dumbwaiter doors are already open. But if they were closed, you could just reach out here and press... Hey, wait a minute. If the doors were closed, you wouldn't be able to reach out here. You'd be trapped inside. Up. Oh. All right. Be real quick about it, Larry. And in. There you go. Whoop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was supposed to take about like 30 seconds to complete, but now that we're on a modern PC, it's just like, whoop! What an open, uncluttered, minimalist decor. You wonder what the rent is on a place like this. What the rent? You're at a resort. Uh, rent, I think, is by the day. Unless, does someone actually live here? Wow, the 90s retro Asian decor. It's a kotatsu, one of those low Japanese-style dinner tables. Wow, edutainment. Look at that, Kotatsu. Look at you. All right, well, let's explore this place. And there she is. Our ultimate goal, wearing these really weird sort of Ziploc baggy pants. Three perfect roses rest in individual vases in a perfect example of beauty and simplicity. This must be one fascinating and confident woman to decorate so tastefully and yet sparingly. Um... Decor, I mean, this is a lot of really wasted empty space. If I were an interior designer or an architect, this would be really upsetting. But the fire pit in the middle is nice. How unusual. A natural gas fireplace burning with an intense blue flame at a tropical resort. The doors flung open while the air conditioner runs at full force. Obviously, this woman has no financial problems either. It's not the financial problem I'm worried about. I'm thinking a little bit more environmental. You know what? Never mind. I'm going off on tangents. Let's say hello to, uh, what's her face? Hi, I'm in your house. How you doing? She does not seem to care about me being here at all. It's like, how did you break into my penthouse apartment? I would be wondering, uh, throwing you off the railing. Shamara is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And she's not at all shy. Shamara is everything you've dreamed of in a woman, and more, perfect in every way. You feel sure there's no way a woman like her could become interested in a man like you. But that's never stopped you before. All right, so this is Shamara, the way, 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 way out of my league person who is going to be Larry's sort of true love hopeful uh, by the end of the game. But how do we win her favor, you may ask? Well... Let's talk to her and find out. We'll go down this little rabbit hole. Oh, have I died and gone to heaven? No, you've broken into you? my house and now you die. And which department of the spa do you represent? I don't recognize your strange uniform. Are you with the kitchen help? Oh, what that's why I'm not bounced out of here. She thinks I work why? with the resort. Ah. Are you sure you're supposed to be here? No. Oh, I don't. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, actually, that's right. I, I do work for the spa. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Laffer? I'm Shamara Payne. Please state your business here. Um, uh, well, um, I, I, I believe there was some, um, uh, report downstairs, uh, about the dumbwaiter. Yep, <laughs> your dumbwaiter was written up. <laughs> Have you had trouble with your dumbwaiter? Dumb waiter? No, not really. At least no more than usual. Oh. Are you just going to stand there doing nothing, Mr. Larry Laffer? Talk all you want. You'll never get her to raise those arms. 
Hmm, she has this kind of vacant look about her. How you'd love to take off all your clothes and dive into either of those aquamarine pools she calls eyes. Can I actually look at like her little mole there? Can I get like right on top of that? Do you always sit here, Shamra? Just staring out at the ocean? Yes. Once I led a frenetic life. Double clutching espressos at 6 a.m. power breakfasts, concording my way across the pond. Why, I once even owned an Apple Newton. Wow. But one day, I finally looked at myself in my apartment's mirrored ballroom and realized I may be fabulously wealthy. I may be at the top of my chosen profession. I may hang out with the Cognoscenti. Damn, I should have packed a thesaurus. But am I happy? Well, yes, I was. Quite. But more importantly, does my life have meaning? Why am I alive? What difference would it make if I just checked out? So, in what I felt was an extremely Goganish move, I left my penthouse in the care of my servants and moved to this rather deserted island to live a Spartan life of contemplation and thought living off room service and new age music until I can fathom my meaningless life. Rich. Good. Thoughtful. Bad. Wait, Larry, Larry, Larry. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not even going there. Let's just proceed with Shamra and just ignore, just, let's, just. Go. May I blow softly in your hair, Shamra? I'd enjoy that. And later, I bet we can find other things to do together, too. That was a quick turnaround. I thought it was like, oh, yeah, no, talk to her however much you want. She'll never give you the time of day. And Chow, she's like, well, maybe play your cards right and we'll go bone. Let me see if I understand this, Shamara. You're successful, wealthy, and happy. So you gave up everything to sit and think. Yes, Larry. I have everything. And yet, I have nothing. Uh, I don't know. You've got a great pair of tits. <sighs> I can't do it. <laughs> Every part of my being is saying, no, just stop. I want to go home. I want to go do anything else but this. But we've got a soldier. And on. what has your contemplation taught you, Shamra? Oh, nothing really. But lately I've been wondering about the lack of men in my life. What a coincidence. I'm horny too. I often think that myself. About the lack of men in your life? About men? Oh, your sexual orientation or deviation is unimportant to me. What I seek is the perfect man. Oh, that leaves me out. Not physically perfect, you understand, but rather spiritually perfect. Someone sensitive, intelligent, Creative, wise. Hmm. I'm out of here. <laughs> it sounds to me like you're just another self-made, wealthy, healthy, new age, 90s, fast-paced dropout looking for meaning in an otherwise meaningless existence. Why, yes, Larry. That's exactly it. You were paying attention. But can you help me? Can anyone lead me out of this funk? All right, this ultimate babe will be mine. If only I can find something around this dump to please her. I do enjoy, in a rather perverse way, how after Larry gets kind of resigned, it's like, oh God, I don't have a shot with this one. Then he's able to tell her the truth. It's like, you know what I really think about you? And she's like, wow, you actually told me what you were thinking. You were paying attention. And now Larry's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's cute, but in a non-cute, anyway. Now, I don't remember that close-up being there in the uh, original, like, the low-res game, so that close-up may only be there in the high-res version. I might be wrong. I've never seen it before. I'm really curious about these, the practicality of these pants. You've always loved women in transparent clothing. Oh, yeah, let's check out those arms. How you wish she'd tire of keeping her arms mm. crossed. Oh, well. At least we won't be able to admire the beauty of your arm. So, the whole point of Shammer up here 
is that all of these little doodads that we're picking up are supposed to be representative of something deep and philosophical and new agey. For example, let's see, what's one of the first things we got? We got the rose, all right? So let's, or the orchid rather. Let's give her the orchid and you'll get the, you'll get the idea. I want you to have this flower. An orchid, how beautiful, how high school promise. But you wouldn't just give me an orchid, would you? That would be too simple. Well, I... No, this is not merely an orchid. Let me think. It is natural and beautiful and unique and... Wait, I see. You're using this orchid to symbolize the perfection and purity of nature. How natural things are best. How the world can create millions of these flowers, no two alike, just like human beings. And thus, with a simple flower, you are encouraging me to recognize my own individuality, my own uniqueness, my oneness with nature, my own connection to the everlasting life force. Hell, I just thought it was kind of pretty. I knew you'd understand. So, yeah, that's how the whole thing with Shamra goes down. Larry just gives her, like, random crap, and then Shamra reads something really deep into it and thinks you're brilliant and trying to make a statement and teach her. Yeah, so I could give her, like, this toilet seat cover, and then somehow she'd find something really deep and feels out. That's a lie, but I wonder what happens if I do give her the toilet seat cover. Here, read something deep into this, Shamra. No? On second thought, I don't think she'd care for that. <laughs> But what would a woman like this need? Okay. Uh, as long as we're up here, I think... Actually, I think we only have like a handful of what we need already. Um, the silver band is one. The bracelet. Uh, the diamond. And this will come into play eventually. Oh yeah, and the words of wisdom. So let's go ahead and crank those out. Here's the bracelet, which will probably symbolize... What, eternity or the infinite because it's a hoop or something? That'll make a really kicky earring, Shamra. All right, go ahead. Feed me your logic. Shamra, I brought you this sterling silver bracelet. I hope you like it. Oh, Larry, I have no need for bracelets. Once I had hundreds of bracelets, nearly all of them better than this. But wait. Oh, I just thought perhaps. But wait. Mm-hmm. That's not what you're trying to say, is it? This isn't a simple gift, is it? I bet it's much more. The superficial old me would have seen this bracelet as merely a clumsy attempt at a cheap gift. Uh. Probably an ulterior motive. Suspicious as always of a man offering me silver in expectation of future rewards. The old you was very you, astute. You're different. You're as transparent as my pants, <laughs> teaching me to achieve a higher level of consciousness, a deeper understanding. You referenced it. You're helping me scale these mental walls I've built around myself these Just go last ahead and diagnose months. the present, Shamra. Don't I... add your piece. No, Larry, please allow me to bring my thoughts to fruition. I understand now. It's obvious. You're not trying to buy me off with this cheap silver bracelet, are you? I, I, re I really really. You're am. speaking in symbols, aren't you? No. You're challenging me to overcome my shallowness. And I will, rest assured. But a silver bracelet? What can this mean? Oh, I'm so foolish. Such a lightweight. Of course I see it now. Your gift symbolizes the spirit of life itself. A ring with no beginning, no end. A solid circle chasing itself round and round a vast emptiness. Much like my quest for spiritual fulfillment, which it looks like it must be far, far away, but which, when you finally open your eyes to discover it, has actually been right at your feet the entire time. Oh, Larry, your wisdom is so powerful. I believe I'm finally beginning to understand. I just thought you'd look good wearing nothing but a bracelet. Yep, that's exactly what I thought you'd say. <laughs> You're really catching on to me, Sham. There we go. Okay, boy, that's long-winded. Let's just keep going. We might as well make it through it. It's either now or later, so we might as well split it up into two parts. 
Shamra, I hope you like this diamond. It was a gift from a friend of mine. Another diamond? Thanks, Larry, but I have dozens of... Wait, think about it, Shamra. Wait. What am I trying to tell you? It's a symbol, isn't it? No. Yes, I mean, yes. Let's see. What could a diamond represent in your superior way of thinking? Hmm. Superior way of this thinking. This is a tough one. This lady is diamond insane. Girls? No, it can't be about friendship. Could it be a way to cut through my cynicism and jadedness? I've got it. You're trying to tell me that even someone like me, who has been under great pressure for so many years, can use that pressure to transform myself from a dark mental lump of coal into a transcendent human of crystalline purity and beauty. Why, uh, yes, I think that. And you're saying I don't have to give up my tough exterior in order to achieve perfection. How wonderful, Larry! How insightful you are! How wise! How lucky. Mm -hmm. Why, thank you, Shamra. I'm glad you caught my little message. <laughs> I think you need to give yourself more credit than you do. The one thing I do appreciate about this scene is how the music kind of evolves. Like the more things you give her, the more instruments are added to the uh, to the background. I think it started off really simple, and now there's two other instruments have joined. Now we have the drums, and we got the they got the flute, whatever. It's cute. Um, I think the only thing I can give her right now. Uh, this will come into play later, but I'll show you. And then we have the words of wisdom, which we'll never know. There's something I simply must tell you. May I whisper in your ear? Of course, Larry. But what is it? It's just a little something I learned recently. Something about radishes, that's all I heard. Oh, my God. Don't fall off the balcony. But of of course! Why didn't I ever realize that before? You're right. It makes everything so clear. I've been a fool. Oh, Larry, you are a sensitive, thoughtful, caring, sharing New Age man. Good thing it wasn't something dirty, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah. I just thought you'd want to know. Oh, and that's it. Okay, so I just passed along the cosmic truth and wisdom of the cosmos. Wait, cosmic wisdom? That's redundant. Uh, I think that's all we need. I don't think she needs the champagne. Does she? Would you like to join me in a glass of lukewarm champagne? No, I don't think so. Not really. I prefer my champagne served in a wine bucket, surrounded by cracked ice, bracingly cold, chilled to perfection. Well, I have the bucket, but, um... I'm afraid my ice melted some time ago. Oh, all right. So finally, a use for the ice machine. All right, I think that's all we can do right now. Unless she's dry and chafing, uh, I think we're done. All right, Shamra, until later, all right? And we'll bring you a little bit more crap that you can read really a lot too much into. Now, we can take the dumbwaiter back down if we really want to, but we can just take the elevator down. Now, I can fill up the ice bucket now, but I think by the time we're ready to use it, we're pretty much, you know, nothing else we can do. So, I believe we have the ability to do at least one more thing before we go. Yeah, I used the file. Yeah, so we can use this little electrical thing, and I don't think we even paid attention to it. So it's down by the sauna, and by the sauna, there's this door with a padlock on it. And with this door... This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words Electroshock Exercise Center. But more importantly... There is an open electrical outlet on the wall beside that door. Whenever you see an electrical outlet, you always think of two little faces stacked on top of one another. Don't we all? You know what? It doesn't even matter. I think at some point after we give her the battery, she's still like, Oh, yay, now I want to go into the Electroshock Center and we can go in there and party. But uh, it's locked. We don't need the, We don't have the passcode for it. But we do have this exposed electrical wire, which we can fiddle with. I get points for that. The electrical but... cord you plugged into the wall is still lying there. You doubt that it's up to code. Maybe I can use this somewhere else. 
Um, I remember... What possible use could you make of a length of electrical wire? There was a way that I could strip the ends off of it. I think I just, like, chew on it or something, and I can use that to short-circuit the, the, uh... The keypad. I, mean, I think I just use it on myself and I'll just kind of gnaw on it. You briefly consider forming the cord into a noose and looping it around your neck, but decide you're not doing that badly yet. You briefly consider. Oh, there he goes. Here he goes. Yum, yum, yum. White licorice. You carefully strip away approximately two centimeters of insulation from the end of the wire without the three pin grounded plug. Oh, very wise. Okay, there we go. So now we plug that in. There it goes, buzzing away over there. Then we use that on the door. You tentatively place the bare end of the electrical cord on the door's electronic lock and wait for something to happen. Oh, I see. It's still in my inventory, so I can... Got it. There we go. Cleverly touching the electronic lock with the bare ends of your electrical cord, you pass 120 volts at high amperage through the electronic lock's delicately printed circuit boards, frying them immediately with a gratifying shower of sparks. The lock gives up the ghost as its solenoid freezes in a permanently open state with a loud click. I wonder what's inside here. I don't think it would actually do that. It would stay in its locked position because it got frozen while it was, uh, whatever. I'm no electrician, I'm no engineer. But with all this stuff, I could be, wow, look at this. A huge cabinet covered with elaborate electrical controls, meters, dials, and gauges rests against the wall. It looks like it's just waiting for Dr. Frankenstein to appear. All of this stuff, all of this work in this one room, and you see this room literally for about 30 seconds when the time comes. Now, I, I don't remember what to do here. I think it, you just come into this room and things just kind of happen on their own. But let's fiddle around now, because we'll never be able to come back here again. It'll be like Rose's room or Rose's room. Once it's gone, it's gone. The tanning bed doesn't feel warm. A table covered with genuine artificial red naga hide stands in the center of the room directly beneath a mass of cables. Oh, let's knock on it and give the password. Ah, you guys remember that game, am I right? Yeah. You are afraid to turn on the cabinet as you know even less about electricity than you know about women. This looks out of place, it's like a little extension cord. There's really not much to do here, since everything is turned off until the attendant returns. Ah, how about some of this stuff? You rearrange the vials on top of the cabinet, then quickly move them back into exactly the same place again. No one will ever know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's literally nothing to do here until things happen for us, so whatevs. So that means we need to get her her batteries before we can do anything. And then, is that... I think that's... Is that all that's left? Really? Oh, no! Wait, we still gotta fix the machine! And I completely forget how I'm supposed to fix that patch of pipe. We fixed everything else. But, uh... Yeah, we still got some time. Let's go ahead and get that done. Hey, Al! Alright, so here we go. Took the tram. I had to go back and get another match so we can get rid of Art for a second. Alright, Art, get out of here. We got some tinkering to do. Tinkering in your tinkler. All right, so the point of this is we're gonna jack things up so that Art has to go in here and try and fix it, and then just like the maintenance guy upstairs, we're just gonna rob him blind of everything he needs. Clever! You use the wrench to disconnect the power cable from the motor. Anything else I can fiddle with while I'm in here? This might be a trap. You've done enough damage already. Nope, okay, so now we just wait. Look out. Here comes the driver. Here comes the general. Ladies and gentlemen. Problems, bruh? Oh, sorry. Hey, what the? Ugh, I'd be gone back for this stupid ass tram. It's dark in there. Where's my light? You got it right there. There we go. It's huge. Can I hold it for you? Can I help? Excuse me, sir. May I be of assistance? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, something happened to my motor. Not getting any juice, and I don't seem to be able to hold up the hood, aim the light, and still work under here. Uh, maybe I can help you. How about if I hold your flashlight for you? 
Sure, <laughs> anything is better than this. There we go, I gotcha. There you go, let me just hold that for you. There, does that help? Yeah, perfect. Now I can see what's going on under here. It looks like some butthead disconnected my power cable. But I think I can force fit it back on there. Yeah, got it. <laughs> now, let's see if it works. All right, now I've only got a second to do this. You deftly open. Hey, haha, <laughs> good as new. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your help. Hey, hey, I, I gotta be going now. Um, well, here, you can have your flashlight back. Here you go, buddy. Oh, 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 hey, hey, I almost forgot. I need my flashlight back. There you go. Boy, that sure is a powerful flashlight. Yep, titanium alloy case, Fresnel lens, leather carrying case, and six D-cells worth of pure candle power. See you later. And if you ever need a ride, just oh say so. Oh my god, I just placed his voice. Yeah. Okay, uh, bye. Uh, uh, art here is Thanks Punny for Bones yes, from sleeping, Quest for Glory 4. Man, I bet you a million dollars. IMDB right man. now. No, it looks like I was wrong. So this is Ed Gilbert. Uh, like Little Mermaid. Who was he in Little Mermaid? Oh, he was just like the pirate's captain, Scuttle. Uh, and Punny Bones, oh, who was also in Little Mermaid, was Hamilton Camp. Oh, who recently died. Well, not recently, but 2005. And he was also just additional voices in Little Mermaid. Learning. Well, that'll do for now. So now with the batteries in hand, we can finally fix up, uh, what was her name? Char? Is she the one in the mud bath? The Char? Yeah, we get her done. And then all we got to do is figure out how to fix the last part of the cellulite machine. And then I think we're good. End game. So with any luck, we have one part left in here until we can move to Leisure Suit Larry 7, which is not as heavy handed as Leisure Suit Larry 6 was. I don't know. Well, time will tell. Uh, but until then, yeah, thank you for that, Larry. Good night, Jelly Beans. Uh, good night.